All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, going back to, to Saturday, uh, our guys played really well, had a really good edge uh, to them, had a chip on their shoulder, and we're excited to get back home and play. Um, played well in all three phases. Uh, now the challenge is, you know, how do we respond to that? How do we keep that edge? How do we keep that chip on our shoulder? And the big focal point for us we talked about yesterday um, was our preparation. you, you got to have a great week of preparation Monday through Friday to give yourself a chance to be successful on Saturday. And so that's the that's the chore. Um, really impressed with, with Houston. Uh, last week they – had the ball inside the 10, chance to beat Texas. I thought they played Texas really well, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them with the chance to win. Uh, that's our league. You know, uh, you, you better have your A game every week uh, or you're going to get knocked off uh, or not have a chance to win. If you've got your B or C game, you're not going to have a chance to win in this league. And so you've got to prepare every week and, and um, get your, put your best foot forward come Saturday. What When you go back and look at Saturday, what did the defense do that was so effective? We tackled probably the best we've tackled this year. Uh, they they spit a couple of good runs. One we just misfit, um, and uh, another one we did miss a tackle on. But for the most part, uh, I thought we tackled really well in space. Uh, I thought uh, we made some plays on the on the on the ball. Even though we didn't get a ton of sacks, we were getting good enough pressure that we made him throw a little bit uh, quicker. And then, you know, bottom line, and we talk about it every week, I think there were two for 13 maybe on third downs, and we were 10 for 13. Well, there's the football game right there because it adds possession time. It adds yards and possessions, and that was huge for us getting off the field. Having seen Donovan Smith last year with Tech, does that help you at all in preparation? Uh, yeah. Uh, he's a good player. Tons of respect for him. Um, I know his – uh, I know his dad. I've been around uh, watching him play. It seems like he's been playing a long time. Uh, I was really impressed with him last year and uh, really kind of forgot until early in the season where he landed and then looking at the schedule saying, okay, um, we, we get him here in whatever it is, week eight, and, and now it's upon us. And uh, if you just <clears throat> watch the, the Donovan Smith tape of uh, explosive runs, big-time throws, uh, he he makes their offense go. I'm very very impressed with him. And what did Houston do so well against Texas? They changed their defense up for starters. Uh, they did something that they typically uh, or hadn't done this year. I don't think they had done, and and uh, um, I thought that was a surprise probably to Texas. And um, whether they'll do that to us, I, I don't know. We have to be prepared for them to do that. You know, they they played one. Um, one defense or, or on that day and then some other defenses throughout the year. We've got to be prepared for everything, but I thought they, they took the explosive play away from Texas, which is really hard to do. I thought their uh, coaches on defense had a really good scheme against Texas, and then they were able to – you know, I think the most impressive thing about that game is, is I think they were down quite a bit early and were able to uh, have some resolve and some resiliency at home to get it back even and then have a chance to win. So um, I, I think they're they're believing in what uh, what Dana's doing with them, and I've been a big fan of Dana for a long time. Uh, ben Sennett and Austin Romain, are you expecting them to play this yeah. week? Um, I can't answer that right now. Uh, Romain did practice uh, yesterday, but he practiced late last week and just wasn't able to go. Uh, ben didn't practice, but that was probably assumed. Uh, it's probably too early in the week to, to make a determination on either of those kids. Jace Brown, he's moved up on the depth chart yep. this week after a big game. Um, what took him a little bit of time to get to, to this point? And then now that he's here, what kind of impact do you think he can make? Well, he's a freshman, and that takes you a while uh, to learn what we're doing, to be comfortable with all the things we're doing offensively. Um, you know, he missed a little time. Uh, and then we've had some other injuries at that position, which has enabled him to continue to get more practice reps. And with those practice reps, he's uh, did a lot of the things during practice is what you guys saw on Saturday, you know, being able to stretch the field vertically, um, being able to um, break away in man coverage in the back of the end zone like he did on the one throw that Will had to him. He's playing faster. 
and that's uh, that's something that t- takes a little while sometimes for a freshman. And so we're excited about uh, uh, where he's at right now, and we still got a lot of football left of what he can do this year. Carver Willis, just what kind of progress has he made from the start of the season to now? A, a ton of progress. He was our offensive lineman uh, of the game from a coaching perspective. Um, Carver is a really good athlete. He's been able to maintain and steadily gain weight as the season's gone on. That's uh, something that's been important to Carver. Uh, he's He understands what we're doing. He's been in the system a long time now, so he understands what we're doing uh, and is run blocking and pass blocking at a high level. And he just needed confidence, and he needed snaps and game reps. And as, as awful it was to have Duff out um, – throughout fall camp and, and early on in this season, it definitely made Carver better because he got all those reps with the ones, played a lot of snaps early, and it allowed Coach Riley, I believe, to gain a lot of confidence in him to keep him in that rotation. Jacob Parrish got home on a corner blitz last week. So what kind of football instincts does he bring to the table? Uh, a, a bunch. He, we, he was playing our nickel spot during that time, and um, we had put a, a, a blitz in, a nickel blitz in, uh, that uh, um, you know we thought had a chance if he disguised it well, and he did a really good job disguising it. Sometimes you give those things away by getting too close to the line of scrimmage. He covered down his receiver all the way until about the snap, cheated his feet, and then the bigger thing was it wasn't like it was a you know it was a free run, but it took a while for it to develop with the stunt that we had, and, and the quarterback was scrambling away, and he stayed after it and made a big uh, made a big play. But uh, you know it. It uh, it was good to have him playing inside because then it allowed us to play Will and and Keenan Garber outside. Um, it was good to have Will Lee back, even if he was somewhat limited uh, as far as giving some breaks to Keenan Garber and Jacob. Keenan Garber's playing much much better. Um, I think no different than a kid like Carver Willis just getting all those ex- game reps uh, when Will was out has helped him and. You know, we got to keep remembering that uh, he's less than a year away from being removed of being a wide receiver. You know, he didn't make that move until the week of the Big 12 championship came, really. And so uh, I- I'm really happy and pleased for Keenan um, that he's made the strides he's made. I know the plans are probably still being formed for this week at this point, but do you expect a similar approach at quarterback? No, we, we haven't talked about it yet with, with Colin. Um, he and I will visit as the week goes on. Um, I, I, I really don't know. We'll have to wait till Saturday. And Chris Bennett, I think he's had some really good success the last yeah. few games. Is his confidence at an all-time high? Uh, it, it is. Uh, and, and Chris never, uh, I should say this year, hasn't let the – you know, the maybe the down, a couple of down times he had affect him. Maybe like it did last year. I think he learned a lot from, from Ty and Jack and Randon. Uh, you know, I, I was pleased that he, you know, he kicked off well. He uh, had a couple of big field goals. Uh, the one was really big late, uh, or the forty yarder, forty five yarder. He made a really good tackle on kickoff, which w- was good for for him because he saw Ty do that exact same thing a handful of times over the last couple of years and he sees where he is important in that fit of that kickoff and he was able to go up there and help us make a play. Obviously every week we talk about the fact that the Big 12 is so competitive yeah. and anyone can win. It strikes me though coach that K-State's one of a handful of teams to rank top 20 in both scoring offense and scoring defense. First off, I just wanted to get your thoughts. What's making you click so well in offense? Um, you know, just what what we've seen the last couple weeks um, is what I kind of saw in fall camp when everybody was healthy and clicking. And we're not all healthy yet there. Uh, I think some of the things that we're doing in the run game – are going to continue to open up the passing game because that's something that uh, we know as a staff and as, a, as an offensive unit, we, we still have more in us in the pass game. Um, but I, I know that's going to pop because of what we're doing, rushing the football. And, you know, how you get really good numbers in scoring offense is you don't kick field goals. You get touchdowns in the red zone, and we're at an alarmingly good rate of getting touchdowns in the red zone. And then on defense – you know, the, the amount of time that we put into red zone defense, keeping people out of the end zone, making people drive the length of the field, 
Um, we didn't do that early in the season. We were giving up too many explosive plays. Um, lately, we've done a better job with eye discipline, which allows you know people to, or makes people have to drive the ball, you know, eight plays in 75 yards, and uh, we held them to to a field goal last week uh, in the red zone. So we put a lot of time and emphasis into it, um, and, and those are two stats that you do keep track of because of you know uh, points per game is 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 huge, but. Uh, it all correlates to how you're doing on third down. If I saw things right, Keegan maybe didn't play in the second half. And yep. What about RJ? What's their status? Um, you know, it, it, they're probably game time decisions. I think RJ's further along. Um, Keegan got got hurt late in the first half, and similar to Ben and Austin, we just got to wait and see how the week goes. But uh, I think RJ will be okay. Trying to talk about what Avery does so well. What about the things you're looking for him to? you know, work on and get better at this next game? Just the game operation of everything, whether it's um, getting the signal from the sideline to processing all that, to getting it aligned, seeing the picture on defense, and continuing to play faster. I think that's that's for everybody um, to see it and then play as fast as you can. Uh, but for the quarterback position, it's so imperative that uh, – you know, what you see pre-snap is what you're going to get post-snap, and he's continuing to get better on those things. And, and I, I think um, some adversity that he had on, on Saturday will make him better. Um, you know, a couple things that uh, he maybe have wanted back or a play or, or way way we called something or maybe we got mixed up on a signal. I think all those things are growing uh, pains that uh, we're going to have, but he makes so many splash plays that, uh, you know, he's, he's a true freshman. And uh, I'm super proud of him, and uh, he's making us better on offense, as, or making us better on offense, making us better on a, as a team because of what he can do. But he's still learning. Going back to Houston's offense, we talked about Donovan Smith, yeah. but their offense against Texas was all pass. Yeah. So what kind of threat are their wide receivers? They're really talented wide receivers. They're also return specialists and stuff. Uh, they've got uh, home run threats. Uh, I, I like their running backs as well, um, and uh, they've got a really good offensive line. Um, you know, I haven't really dove into strictly the Texas game because we watch it as, as cut-ups an awful lot, um, but maybe there's some certain things that Texas was doing that uh, said, hey, we can't pound it against these guys. We might as well spin it around, spin it around against them. Um, but uh, they have the ability to, to do multiple things offensively, especially with – with Donovan Smith being able to rush the football. When you throw the, as, as we all know, when you throw the quarterback run into uh, your rush game, it makes it so much more difficult to defend. And so we've got to be ready to, to be able to stop quarterback run, the running, running back stuff, as well as their talented receivers. I was wondering, <coughs> defensively, you had one of your better games, but I think only two tackles for loss. I was just curious if there was anything you were doing differently there that uh, nope um you know I, I thought tcu had one of the better offensive lines uh in the conference and they're big they're athletic and and they probably don't give up a whole lot of penetration um you know we've improved uh i thought we would improve uh there's belief um, they're playing with an edge. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. But, um, you know, you're only as good as your last game. You're only as good as you, your, your last play. And those are over with. And, and we're pleased with the progress we're making. But it's just progress. And, and uh, momentum's a, a, a really fragile thing in sports. And, and you better keep the momentum and, and keep the edge and, and keep playing with the chip because once you lose it, it's hard to get it back. And so – um, we've emphasized that. More importantly, the older guys in the team have continued to talk about how we've been successful the last two weeks, not so much of how we weren't successful against Oklahoma State or Missouri or whoever else, that they're actually pretty good teams, but what we're doing that has made us successful the last two weeks and, and not to forget about that and, and uh, um, try to replicate that. And, and that's simple as – you know, have the best Tuesday we can have because we can't control Saturday yet. We've got to control uh, our best effort uh, on Tuesday. I was going to ask about Jacob Parrish. Um, he just continues to 
thrive and get better. What what are you seeing from him in terms of he's, what he's doing really well? And yeah. then what's next for him, would you say? Well, his preparation has been really good. Um, he does a great job with film study of seeing what receivers are doing, seeing what splits are, seeing what the plays are based on the formation, backfield set, all those other things. He is a confident guy with his technique. Um, I think that he can continue to – um, get better just because he's still a true sophomore that uh, is doing this. And, you know, he missed one game, so he's really young in the fact that he was a spot player for us last year until late and he played a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I think his best football is still in front of him. That message similar with VJ since the switch, would you say? Yeah, I, you know, VJ's a little bit tougher situation because of the switch. You know, he, he – he played four games, whatever it was last year, as the third team strong safety, and we lose the top two guys. And so he was really thrust into a position that he had to play. Um, and then in the spring, or in spring, we switched positions with him because we had Kobe back. And Kobe didn't play a ton of snaps in spring, but we switched positions, trying to get both of them on the field, went through fall camp, did all that stuff. And then we found out that he was better suited at one spot, and we were going to try Kobe at the other spot. And um, you know, we we talked about it. And Coach Kleinerman's such a, a, a brilliant, detailed secondary coach that he talks in terms of understanding all three spots. But you still have to get experience at those spots rather than just seeing it from a board or seeing it from a film. And so um, just watching, I thought BJ's played two of his better games the last couple weeks as he's getting more comfortable. I thought Kobe Savage has played two of his better games as he's getting more comfortable. You're just seeing things from the middle of the field or you're seeing things from the boundary safety, and it's just different pictures. But both of them have settled in and are playing with a lot of confidence. Broad question here, but most of the new Big 12 members are kind of down at the bottom of the standings right now. From your perspective, how hard do you think it must be for these teams to come in and, and play this schedule right away? Um, I really don't look at the standings. I, I honestly don't. Um, I, I think it's the same thing. Um, they're figuring out how the Big 12 is. They know how tough it is and, and parity and all that stuff. I'm learning about Houston. I don't know much about Houston. They may not know a whole lot about Kansas State. We know a lot about TCU. We know a lot about Oklahoma State. We know a lot about – the teams that you play year in and year out. I think the more data you have, the more uh, times you're in those facilities, the more times that you battle against people, uh, you learn more about them. And I think that's that's sometimes really hard. My first year here in 19, I had no idea um, what all these teams were about and, and what not only the rivalries, but just how competitive and, and how good – um, teams were until you start building a portfolio on these teams. And uh, I, that's where Dana's got a huge advantage because of his time at West Virginia. And I think that's where, you know, he had a chance to beat Texas, had a chance to beat Texas Tech, uh, had a really good win over, over West Virginia. He's got uh, the blueprint to do it because he's he's been in this league for so long. And that's what, you know, uh, I see with Houston is they're they're talented, but they also have a coach that knows what it takes to win in this league. I also wanted to ask, um, KT, um, can you remind me, what was your first impression of him and contrast that now to how far he's come? Uh, un uh, unbelievable maturity right now. Um, probably made some mistakes as a younger player, and that was on the field, in the classroom, whatever, growing up and, and learning how to be away from home. Seeing that, seeing him now, and seeing how he leads this football team, and and I and I say that as the most respectful thing. He leads the football team. He was trying to just help KT when he was younger and try to be on the right course. He's helping everybody on our football team now. I don't care if you're a young defensive lineman, a young DB, the offensive line. Um, KT's an a great leader and a great role model and a great example to all these young players of, you ask the young players, they'd think KT has been a four year starter and never had any issues here, you know? And, and, the, and that's, that's a lot of guys. A lot of guys think Austin Moore was probably on scholarship when he got here. 
you know, you just you hear about stories, and uh, KT is one of the unique stories because I've seen him grow so much in in every way, and and uh, so proud of the way he's playing. He's playing at an all conference level, and it's opening up a lot of eyes at the next level for him. Chris, back to Avery for just a second. The sample size isn't very big in terms of the amount of snaps he's taken, but where would you say he is in terms of? if he sees something different of getting you to the right play. He's really good at it right now for a young player. I mean, you got to realize, is is he doing what Will and Skyler did? Probably not yet, but that's that's to be expected. But when you tell him something, boy, he locks it in. And you don't have to tell him something twice. And that's a sign of somebody that's laser focused, locked in on what his job is. And the fun thing, even for this year, he's going to continue to get so much better just with not only the snaps he's taken, but the snaps he's watching with Will, the snaps that they go through uh, in their film of practice or game. He's an absolute sponge uh, from the quarterback position. And I, I get the opportunities on Mondays and Tuesdays to spend an hour with the quarterbacks and, and look at the film from a defensive pers perspective and just the questions that, that all those guys ask – um, you can tell they, they really wanted to learn and really want to know the whys of the defensive side. And that's, that's something that is really important, not just how it's explained to them from an offensive perspective, but how the defense is explaining it so that um, uh, it'll help them, you know, whether it's uh, in the game to practice or a year from now, two years from now, whatever it may be. You know, plenty of others, obviously. Do you see times where teams try to go maybe too fast and it hurts them? Um, it's hard for me to answer that because I've not I'm not been an offensive coach and I've not been a tempo coach, so I, I don't know. I, I would if I said yes, there'd be enough examples where the tempo has made it so much more difficult to defend those people, and um, uh, so it'd be hard for me to answer that. I, people are going to do things the way they do them, and and uh, they have their reasons. I, you know, for us, um, when we play those type of teams, um, we make a conscious effort to try to keep the ball and try to make sure that we're not in – simple thing, don't get to third and 10 or 12. Try to keep it at third and manageable so that if nothing else, you move the change in two, two more minutes, two and a half more minutes, get off the clock. And if you have a lead and do those things, um, it, it probably puts more pressure on that you got to score every time you get it. You know, that, that series to start the second half was huge because I didn't think – you and I talked when I came out uh, at halftime. This was still a huge – I mean, we were up 28-10 to 10 on that team before and lost. And so this first possession was going to be huge. And they moved the ball down, and we found a way to get a stop. And then we took eight minutes off the clock. The third quarter was gone. Wanted to ask you about the – schedule you've had four straight night games and now yeah. you've got a morning game is is there any challenge to that or are you pretty similar um, in how you'd no there's there's time? challenges uh as a coaching staff we, we love it um we're early morning guys and and get home really really late um especially when you're on the road there's big challenges because we had developed a really good routine on friday and saturday for the last four weeks um, and that has to change. I mean, you just can't say, well, well, we'll cram more into Friday. I don't know how much more we can cram into Friday. Uh, and we can't cram anything into a Saturday morning with 11 a.m. kick. So it's something that um, we're not just talking about with coaches. We're talking about with Scott Troush and nutrition. We're talking about with Mindy and her staff with recovery and, and rehab and, and treatments. We're talking about with Coach True in how we get our guys as fresh as they can. It's the catapult stuff. There's a ton of things that we've had meetings on on Monday and Tuesday of how we can, A, get our guys as fresh as we can and how we can maximize the time we have on Friday and Saturday, especially with us being a really early morning start on, on Saturday with our, with our pregame, uh, to throw the fact that it probably isn't going to be 80 degrees on Saturday. Practice schedule remain fairly consistent. Yeah. We're going to keep that consistent. We've kept that consistent the last um, Texas Tech week and on because of where the bye was. It'll stay consistent um, throughout the, for the most part, throughout the rest of the season. And the guys 
have had an input in that. Our leadership council and captains have had an input of here's how we're going to do things from a walkthrough, from a practice standpoint, so they know exactly what Tuesday and Wednesday are about. Because that's the huge key for them is how do I get my bodies prepped for Tuesday and Wednesday as your harder work days. Any night practices or anything like that? No, we, we don't do any night practices, and we can't do the mornings because of the class schedule. You bet. One one week season and break it down more than that, one day each week. You know, we, we've got to attack today. and We've got a lot of game plan things in on Tuesday, whether it's short yardage, third down, whatever it may be, of making sure that we attack Tuesday and all the things that come with Tuesday, not just the practice, but taking care of your body, nutrition, rest, and then we'll do the same thing on Wednesday and so forth.